They're a little snotty. A little snotty, but I got it. It's me. Mikey Pike. All right, I got this Ray Pack Ream heat pump water heater. The customer's complaint is that we have a high pressure error lockout. Um, my other technician, Daniel, was here a few weeks ago and diagnosed a defective TXV. And uh, when you replace the TXV, you're also gonna replace the filter dryer. So I got everything set up, all my tools, I'm just going to uh, confirm the customer's problem. Right now we are in compressor start delay with a water temperature of 74 degrees and it's uh, 73 right now. So let's see what happens when this thing fires up. All right, while we're waiting for the compressor delay to uh, finish up, I turned it off by the way. I uh, removed the Schrader cores from the high and low side pressure ports, hooked up my digital refrigeration manifold. I wanna see what kind of pressures we have in here. And by the way, when I took out my Schrader core for my high side, I got a lot of oil there and a lot of oil. Let's see, let's open that up slowly. Okay, and the other side. It's kind of interesting that the pool heater has not been operational. And uh, we have those kind of uh, disparity, you know, difference in the um, high and low side. Okay, so let's turn this bad boy on. There's the click. There's our compressor. Okay. Very high. <laughs> it's very high. You saw that. Wow. That went very, very high. All right. Time to recover. Wow. All right, we have eight pounds, five ounces of our 410A in here. Start recovering. All right, so nothing really changed on the test port side with the manifold. I got my yellow charging hose, <clears throat> excuse me, hooked up to the Viver. This is my recovery machine. Viver was nice enough to send that to me uh, for testing and evaluation and to document uh, my use of it on my social media channel so big shout out to viver tough tools half the price i call them the um the harbor freight tools for online <laughs> um has its pros and its cons but it works okay i'm going to open up my high and my low side valves on my manifold we're going to open up our charging hose and we're going to purge out the air out there we go right there beautiful okay and now we're gonna open up that right there i already had zeroed out my scale before so we're already at uh, 0 0.5 a positive 0 0.5 that we've taken out of here so far all right uh recover fast power's on let's go <laughs> Remember, eight pounds, five ounces. All right, so a few minutes already into recovering. We took out 5.7 pounds already. I removed all the screws from the top um, condenser bezel off. Took a picture of my wiring going into my condenser fan motor relay and my dual capacitor. We're gonna take off the condenser motor off the side with my display bezel panel. Disconnected all the wires for that, including the ground. They really don't give you much room. I guess there was a sale on green wire when they assemble these things because they literally leave you like six inches <laughs> of ground wire. You can't move the panel anywhere, so you have to disconnect it immediately. But I'm gonna take the top off and uh, start finish the disassembly process. All right, my pressure is at zero. Uh, recovered nine pounds altogether. That's what my scale said. I don't get how that's possible, but 
Maybe there was an, an error in uh, zeroing out the scale. Who knows, but took out nine pounds of refrigerant out of the system. Uh, got my brazing rig out, and while I'm starting to braze, the pressure sensing uh, capillary tube uh, that's brazed onto that piece of seven eighths, I ran out of gas. <laughs> So I grabbed my B-Tank. It took a little bit longer to take it out, um, but I was able to sweat that out. And then I'm gonna change course. I was going to get in here and just cut below the filter dryer and sweat out my connection at the top, at the bottom of my distributor cap right there. But change of plans, I'm gonna go below my uh, filter dryer. I'm gonna cut it with my little mini cutters down there. And I'm gonna cut that seven eighths between my um, TXV and my distributor cap. And I'm gonna use the Stay Bright 8 with the, um, the Stay Clean Flux. And it's perfect, it's approved for 410 AUs. The pressures are fine, we're good, I'm not worried. But plan B, we improvised, we adapted, we overcome. Needed a lot more room. Disconnected my wires to my uh, water sensors, my EXV. Um, sex, suction and coil and outdoor air sensors all here and somewhere over there. <laughs> uh, unscrewed a couple screws at the bottom along the sides on both sides and slid this thing out of the way and that was able to get my Milwaukee M12 tubing cutter and I cut the top of the TXV before it went into the distributor cap and I got my little mini cutters in right there and we're going to uh, cut out the filter dryer. Um, it is zip tied with a big ass duct tie to this piece of metal. I don't know why it's like that. Uh, maybe to protect something at the factory, at the co I don't know, but it's attached to the bottom of the compressor. I don't know what that's about, but let me finish cutting that out and um, show you what I'm working with. Good luck deburring this pipe <laughs> on the vertical going down. All right, so there's that. I got to uh, cut this duct tie out of the way. Let me get my side cutters. All right, here's my filter dryer and my TXV. She's filled with oil. Let's see if I can blow through this. I sure can. Wow. Crazy. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. What's up with that? Why is this one directional? And my replacement is bi directional. I thought this does heating and cooling. Interesting. Um, I'm gonna cut this other side and see where my restriction is. Is it in my filter dryer or in my TXV? But the amount of oil that came out of that was, you see, it spilled over there, you see? I'm like, and it's, what's up with that? So let me cut that and see what's going on inside there. Okay. Well, that's good. There's this, uh, you know, that screen that's there. Hmm. Something's not right here. Something really ain't right here. All right. Um, the screen won't let me take it out. Um, I took the cap off the bottom of the TXV. Let's see if I can make any adjustments to this. <sighs> Nothing going that away. Let's see what happens if I open it. Or it could be closing it. Oh, there you go. Let's fully seat it. Nothing. Yeah. 
Bad TXV. All right, so I am setting up my filter dryer and my TXV for the Stay Clean and Stay Bright 8. I'm going to sweat that together and uh, then we're going to assemble the rest of it down below. All right, I brazed in that uh, the temperature sensor capillary tube to the, uh, the inlet of the compressor. Or is it outlet? Well, regardless, the 7 8 off the compressor. Uh, reattached my uh, temperature sensing feeler bulb. Reattached the uh, temperature sensor. Put the dryers in place, TXV. Vacuuming down. I got the Eco Tools True Blue evacuation kit here with the Blue Vac Plus Micron gauge. It's been running for a few minutes. Four minutes, 2700 microns and dropping. I'm gonna let this sit now and uh, I'm gonna reassemble the unit while it's vacuuming down. All right, while I'm waiting for this to vacuum down, we just got below 1750 and now it's going back up again. Go figure. Maybe a pocket of moisture boiled off and expanded and uh, raised up our reading our micron reading but slow and steady um while i'm waiting for this to vacuum down i wrapped my txv temperature sensing bulb with some uh diversitec foam insulating tape i also wrapped some insulation around the temperature sensor that's immediately after the temperature sensor for the txv and that goes to here so I have pictures, so we'll figure out where that went later. So far, so good. That's later. Vacuuming. Long process. It is what it is. All right, we got down to around 500 microns. I'm recharging the system now with the recovered refrigerant. Boy, it's leaking water there. Now that the pump came on, I don't know. I guess I'll have to investigate that. Because <laughs> there shouldn't be any water dripping there. Oh, man. 7.4, 7.5, 7.6. We need to go to 8 pounds, 5 ounces. So let's... 8 pounds. Oh, there it is. Shoot. <laughs> Stop that real quick. She's heating. Looks like my pressure switch... It's leaking a little bit there. Um, we're running. We are running, baby. Love it. All right, in the shade, we are, well, maybe it's touching the cement. In the shade, we are 85 degrees. Slowly dropping. 84. Well, Apple says it's 80. Let's say 83. All right, let's check our outlet time. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, well, she's definitely warm. Ah. We are at almost 89 degrees. Yeah. I got the tip of, of the thermal couple probe in there, so we're like at 88 and a half degrees. And our condenser discharge temperature is 65 and a half degrees. All right, we're good. All right, I took apart the TXV to see if there's anything abnormal with it. Um, as soon as I opened up the valve, opened this up and fully front seated it, uh, we had a flow going through here. Maybe something uh, went wrong with it, but, well, something did go wrong with it, but we got a new one in and she's cooling out the top. I mean, she's heating the water. Job done, 7.55, job complete.